Well, before we go in, I better tell you something about the person that built this amazing structure we're about to see. It's in that building over there, Bridge House, on the edge of Castletown Harbour. And it was the home of the Quayle family. And in 1801, George Quayle was living there. And it was he who founded the first Isle of Man Bank. He was a particularly interesting character. He was an MHK, a leading light in the local militia, and an inventor, a dilettante, and something of an eccentric. You can see some of his handiwork in the building next door, which is now the Nautical Museum. It's full of secret compartments with spring-loaded doors, and in it he built a replica of the stern cabin of a sailing ship from the 18th century. He was full of inventive genius and was always experimenting. But perhaps the most bizarre thing about the house is the fact that an 18th century schooner-rigged yacht was discovered here in 1935, walled up in the basement where it had lain completely forgotten since the death of George Quayle. If you look at the building from the outside, you can see the walled-up access to the harbour. So this was an extraordinary man, and as you can imagine, when he turned his attention to building a vault for his bank, it wasn't going to be an ordinary vault. Certainly, its location was secret, and certainly you couldn't get in and out of it unless you possessed specific information. But that's where any parallel with a modern bank vault stops, because George Quayle created an entirely unique way of getting in and out of the vault, and amazingly, 200 years later, we can still see how it worked. The vault is actually in that extension on the side of the building. But unless you knew that, and presumably as few people as possible did, then there's no way you'd ever find it. But even if you did stumble across it accidentally, then getting into the actual chamber would tax even Indiana Jones with its complexity and ingenuity. Let's go and have a look. Well, regardless of the mysteries inside, this is a fabulous house. Today, Bridge House is no longer a private residence. It's leased out to various companies as offices, but its elegance and charm are still very much in evidence. Now, the way into the vault is actually through here on the first floor. Well, it actually looks like an ordinary room in here. It might well have been a drawing room, but over here is a door that leads to something quite exceptional. Go through these doors and you're in the extension we saw from outside. And you're also in another world, one without windows and only trap doors and steep steps to get from one floor to the next. Well, the first thing you notice when you come in here is the incredible way this has been constructed. If you look up there, you can see a series of lintels. This is built like Castle Russian. No one was going to break into this place very easily, even if they could find it. To get to the actual vault, we have to go through a series of trapdoors and down ladders. But before we do that, I just want to show you one thing for future reference. This hole in the wall here, which apparently had a tube coming out of it that went down there. Now that's very significant because we'll need to know about that when we have a look downstairs in a moment. Well, here we are in the antechamber right outside the vault, which is in here. And here is a thick iron door to prevent you getting in. Now, it does have a lock on it, but even if you unlocked it, you still couldn't open the door, because behind it is an iron bar wedged down to prevent it being pushed open. The only way of lifting that bar was from the inside. So how did that work? Well, this is where George Quayle's eccentric genius came into play, because inside there is an extraordinary mechanism to lift the bar. Well, 
Well, this is just incredible. This is the mechanism behind the door that lifts the bar. Now, I can only assume, given George Quayle's genius as an inventor, that he designed and built all this himself. He wouldn't want a carpenter in here doing it who might reveal the secrets around the town and compromise the security of the vault. So how did you start the mechanism working from the outside? Well, remember those holes in the wall that we looked at upstairs? One of those ran through to the drawing room that we were first in. And in a hole in the skirting board, you put in a small cannonball, which ran through the hole, down through the tubes, and entered this chamber up there, through that hole. And it was fed along to the top of this mechanism. Now, I can't pretend to explain how all this worked. What I do know is somehow the ball made its way down and by a series of counterweights and this bucket and goodness knows what. It must have taken him months to work it all out. The net result was that this bar here moved up like that and you could push the vault door open. There's certainly a nautical feel about some of this construction. The use of ropes and pulleys and the other gadgets you see here would be quite familiar to George Quayle, who spent much of his time experimenting with boats. But this has been beautifully constructed, and after 200 years, most of the moving parts are still intact, and it wouldn't take much to restore them. When the vault was reopened in the 1940s, after being long forgotten, some mouldering banknotes from Quayle's failed Isle of Man bank were found. But since then, the vault has rarely been visited, and this extraordinary piece of 18th century eccentricity remains locked away. <laughs>